Matthew, the 28th chapter. Are you comfortable? Amen. Well, I want us to proclaim something together before we get started. I believe in proclamation. Amen. Some of you remember an old friend of mine, uh, Mike Warnke. I talked with him this week, and uh, Mike's 75 years old. Man, he's uh, been with us several times back in the day, but now he's almost unable to travel. But we talk, and Mike, is, he was uh, involved in the Episcopal Church a lot, so they always proclaiming stuff. So, well, this is why we proclaim something. Go to this. Uh, say this with me if you would. God, you created everything, therefore I belong to you. I submit to your claim on my life. You, your care for me is supreme. Your plans for me are great. I am partnering with you in your kingdom. My salvation is sure, and my future is bright. Amen? Amen. I just want to hang on to that and believe that as we move into 2022. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse... This, uh, Let's start here. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. This after Jesus had, uh, was, was uh, resurrected from the grave. He said, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus. Remember, she's there in the garden. She thought he was a gardener. He is not here. He is risen. This is the angel speaking. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. Verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. In other words, whenever that is. You know, we all say to one another, uh, and I heard it said as we were leaving December, I'll see you next year. I actually heard a man say this year already, he said one husband had declared that his wife was so proud of him that he hasn't bought a gun this year. <laughs> Amen. You know, and so, but we're, we're moving into it, and it's going to move very quickly. When Jesus said, go and tell, and he's talked about making disciples. You know, uh, we've been preaching on detours. Uh, last Sunday and Tuesday night. We'll get back on that. But first, we've got to take care of some business. Everybody say business. Uh, there's business when it comes to the Word of God and making disciples and you growing as a disciple of Christ. You've heard me say many times, we are believers being discipled to be like Christ. The bottom line is to say that we are Christian is a nice statement that maybe as a blanket statement over a group of people that they're Christians. But the truth of the matter is, uh, on our best day, we struggle to be like Christ. Amen. So we are believers being discipled to be like Christ or to be Christian. And I'm not trying to take away from your spirituality. I'm trying to add to it by telling you this is a process. Amen. In order to do that, there are three main things that Jesus taught us. He taught us to pray. He taught us to fast. And he taught us to give. But for that to take root in our life, because we fast every year as a church. I've been doing this now, I think, 28, 29 years. And I've been teaching on fasting almost every January. And often we pick up new people that, and then the older folk kind of start figuring out. But you have to ask yourself, why hasn't my fasting produced the fruit that God wanted it to? And the issue is, is that this ground has not been fertile enough to handle the potential, the seed that goes into it. Amen. Because I believe these are seeds, praying and fasting and giving. My money is seed. When I sow my money into something, it's seed. Amen. I sow my money into uh, tractor supply. It's seed. It keeps that place going. Amen. I sold my money into people's lives. Amen. It's seed. It keeps things going. So you've got to look at That's what Jesus taught us. But you're, this, the potential is in the seed. How many understand that? Yeah. You can eat an apple or you take the seeds of the apple and plant it and make a tree. Amen. There's tremendous potential. God put everything in the seed. Father, I love you. Thank you for the word of God. I ask your anointing on my lips to share our hearts to hear. Let us, our hearts open up. Receive this word today. And God, over the next 20, 21 days, or however long you call us into this, that we're able to uh, see production in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Well, what's up? Pastor, what do you think this year is going to take? What's going to happen this year? Let me tell you. There'll be surprises this year. There's going to be disappointments. There'll be gains. There'll be losses. There'll be tests and trials. There's going to be some heartbreak. We already had it this year. 
Amen. As soon as this year started, I've already had heartbreak uh, with passing of friends that have uh, gone on. I've seen victories, good news, bad news, health, sickness, anger, happiness, joy, sorrow, sweet and bitter, clarity, confusion, you know, and last but not least, the opportunity to get distracted, the temptation to quit, just to back away and say, I, I, can't, just, I can't serve God. But in the many years that I've been serving Jesus, I, I've seen many that, if not careful, fall by the wayside. Amen. That's why I'm glad to see many of you still here this year as we press in. And it's a heartbreak. Amen. After, again, the years that I've had, it's, I just hate to see people give up and quit. When I'm reading this passage here that I just read to you, Jesus assured them he's the living God. Some doubt it. Pastor Mike, my pastor, you know, we talk every Sunday as a rule on the way here. He said he's going to preach out of Matthew 14 today. Well, Matthew 14 is my cup of tea. That's the wave walking passage, you know, where Peter's uh, gets out of the boat. And he asked me, he said, why do you think Peter asked to get out of the boat? And he said, I, and, and then Pastor Mike, he's a little more spiritual than I am. And he said, uh, well, he said, I, I think he's asking me the question. He's going to answer his own question. Like I'm talking to a woman here. So anyway, I'm sorry, my bad. So, so anyway, he, he goes on and he says, uh, I think he saw that Jesus walking on the water and, and then, you know, Jesus said, come. And, and he said, you know, spiritually, I I can walk if Jesus can walk. I said, that sounds real good, but let me throw something else at you, Pastor. Flip the coin. He's in the boat with 11 men that are doubting, complaining, scared of dying, fearful. Amen. Because Jesus said they had little faith, and he decided, I'd just soon drown than stay in this boat with these boys. Amen. And if I get to walk, I'll walk. He said, I never thought of that side of the coin before. I said, you stay with somebody who's negative all the time and pessimistic and complaining and, and fearful, you want to get out of the boat too. Can I get an amen? Amen. And that's why I'm reading the scripture. It says, Jesus rose from the dead. And some of them doubted. What? What do you mean they doubted? They still doubt now, even after all this time. So Jesus assured them that he's the living God. He assured them of his authority in his name. He gave it to them. He reminds us of his mission, amen, for us to go out and make disciples, amen. But let me say this to you again. I will be licensing a young man in the next service. Uh, the neat thing about that and the cool thing about it is to remind you that Ephesians tells us that God gave apostles, he gave prophets, he gave evangelists, he gave pastors, he gave teachers, amen, for the maturing of the saints to do the work of the ministry. In other words, all of us are involved in this. You have to go out and make disciples. And my prayer is that you don't make heaven until you've at least made five, six, ten disciples in your life that you've reached people. A man came to me yesterday during a funeral that I've not seen actually now in about three or four years. He put his arm around me. He said, Pastor, I want you to know something. I have so grown in Jesus. Amen. My life has changed. I'm, I'm the husband I feel like God wanted me to be, the father God wanted me to be. But it was the seeds that you put in my life back when I was young that transformed my life. You talking about a little giddy up for me? Amen. Something that, okay, every now and then I could use a little pat on the back. Hallelujah. And it just made me feel good to hear that. That's something that I've done in this man's life years ago. So that's what we want to do. We want to disciple people. We want to help them. And what little bit you do for somebody, you can see the change go on in their life. Jesus taught us that we should do that. Jesus assures us that he was with us all the way. In other words, there's never going to be a day I wake up and Jesus is dead. He always going to be with me. Amen. First thing in the morning when I pray, he's there. He's waiting on me to wake up. Hallelujah. And the devil's praying I won't. Come on, give me an amen. Amen. Many times we have great intentions. Well, we intend to do well. And as we hit January, many people, they have these intentions. They're going to do this. They're going to change this. And so to me, it's not about making a, uh, uh, what's the word, resolution. That's not the solution, but, the, but it's not about resolution, but it's about me deciding, okay, this year I'm going to do something biblical. Amen. I want to stick with the book. I'm going to stay with it. So when I look into Matthew chapter 13, amen, I see Jesus speaking, and he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower, somebody that has seed, went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. Now, as a young boy, we always had a garden growing up, and I remember planting seed. And there were times we would put the seed into the ground, and then there were times we would throw the seed. It's according to what we were planting. And so in throwing the seed, you had to stay in the row and not throw it outside. And my dad that, that field that I'm talking about where we always pl uh, planted, it always had grass and, and weeds in it. But my dad would go up there, and he'd start working the soil. And then he'd have us get the tiller, and we'd go out with the tiller, and, and we'd work the soil, and we'd work it. And I think, that looks good enough. He said, no, I still see the weeds. I want it turned under. And we'd go out, and we'd just stay at it, stay at it. 
Then after a while, it just looked like fresh dirt out there, just mound up. And then he'd start cutting a roll, and we'd start planting the seed. And then the Scripture says that when he sowed some seeds, some fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith sprung up because they had no depthness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them out. But others fell into good ground. Everybody say good ground. And they brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. To me, this is one of the most powerful parables Jesus ever taught. He taught about our hearts, amen, in in the same sun, it softens the butter, hardens the clay. If your heart is already hardened toward Christ, when you hear the gospel, it just gets harder and you get meaner. But if your heart is soft and pliable and you worship and you love Jesus, amen, it's like I can receive, Pastor, I can hear that kind of word. I can, I can believe in healing. I can believe in, in, in the blessings of God. Matter of fact, can I tell you, this talks about prosperity, that if the seed goes in the ground. And listen, if you've ever invested, and I'm not going to ask you if you have, but I, if you've ever invested in something, you want to have an increase on your investment. And this scripture says that if my heart is right, if the ground is good, when the word of God goes in it, when the seed goes in here, it's going to bring forth 30-fold, 50-fold, 100-fold. That's a good investment. Some of you, if you get 3%, you're going to go for it. But if somebody told you you get 30%, mm-hmm. if somebody said if you get, you get 100% return on your, you'd be plump, dumb, stupid, and ignorant if you didn't invest in that. That is no Ponzi scheme. Can I get an amen? amen. This, this is good stuff here. So Jesus said, hey, you want to trust me in this. I want you to invest in good ground. So when I hear the word of God, it comes in here. It's got, I got to decide, is this a stony heart? Is it, or, or is this where the birds and the fowl come in? He also talked about some of it springs up quick. You'll see some folk give their life to Jesus and it's, yeah, and they're excited. And they go out and it's good. It's guns on guns blazing. Amen. And the first little bit of scorch that comes on them, they just wither up and die. Amen. Again, you'll see this in ministry. So it's important to have your heart right. I think when I was young, I would go to church and I'd hear the gospel being preached and it was always during a revival and and I'd hear that, just as I am. That's all the song I know. But they'd sing it over and over. And my friends, and I'm talking about when I was 11, 12, 13 years old, They'd nudge me, and they'd say, if you'll go on up, they'll quit singing. So I'd leave the back row of the New Bethel Baptist Church, and I'd go to the front, and I'd stand there as a young boy, a teenager, and the preacher would look at me, the revivalist, and he'd say, and and this is the hard part, he'd say, what have you done that was wrong? And I thought, oh, they didn't tell me I'm going to have to confess. And I always had a standard when, you know, I lied to my mama. He lied! Mama. I thought, thank God I didn't tell him the truth. And he'd have shared my stuff all over that church. Amen. And then they prayed over me and I repented and stuff. But here's the problem. My heart was not in a place of receiving Jesus or the word of God that I heard. Amen. So I moved through life and I went through life. I got injured. I, was, I got uh, football injuries. I, I ended up in a car wreck. It almost uh, uh, killed a couple of us, busted me up again. I had to go through uh, crutches, and it, uh, three out of four years in high school, I was on crutches. I've been drinking since literally my first time I ever drunk a beer was when I was six years old. Amen. So now I'm drinking, I'm smoking, there's some drug issues going on in my life. But here's the thing. It seemed like nothing I was doing was working. Amen. And what was happening is God was preparing my heart. So when I went to church November the 10th, 1979, amen, I'm sitting on a Saturday night in a gospel singing. I heard the word of God. Amen. And I, I can't tell you what was preached. There was mainly a concert, but then there was an altar call. You didn't have to tell me I had to go up front. Amen. I had Randy and Bubba that brought me there, but just something drew me. And I understood later by the Word of God, it's the Holy Ghost that drew me, that brought me in, that, that kind of pulled me forth. And my heart was right. And when I prayed, the ground was good. Amen. And all of a sudden, it started getting fertile, and I, I, I started feeding it and watering it and growing with it. And that's what I see happen so many times. Sometimes we're manipulated in. I don't want to manipulate anybody into serving Jesus. I don't want to make you go to heaven. 
nor do I want to see you go to hell. Amen. Don't want to see I want you to decide, is my heart ready to receive this? And that's what Jesus is talking about. So a lot of times, it's the fertile, and the fertile often takes place during the persecution. It's amazing how many countries have been persecuted. You'll see thousands and thousands come to Jesus at one time because they're, they, they're looking for an answer. They're looking for help, and they, so they receive Christ, and you see that growth takes place. So good ground equals good increase. The mission of making disciples, not just decisions. Many times we can make decisions. I hear people say, six people got saved today. Yeah, but only two of them stuck. Only two of them were for real. Amen. Their hearts were right there. So the issue is dealing with the potential that's in the seed. The seed has potential. That's unexposed ability, reserved power, untapped strength, capped capabilities, unused success, dormant gifts, hidden talents, latent power. When I see that, I think to myself, amen, how many people in here have still, no matter your age, you've got potential. Amen. There are gifts that you haven't used this. Something's been dormant inside of you that could come alive. I've seen some of you start businesses over the last few years. You didn't even know you had the ability to do that, but God gave you that ability. Amen. That potential was there. Potential is what you can do that you haven't done yet. What have I not done yet? Amen. Uh, where you can go that you haven't yet gone. Who you can be that you haven't yet been. Let me just tell you, I have watched, uh, by the way, happy birthday, Josiah Ramirez. When that young man came to us, oh, was it seven, eight years ago? Amen. The, ten years ago. We didn't know the potential in that young man's life. He held a weed eater. Amen. All summer long. Didn't even know he could play. I didn't know you could even play a guitar then. Amen. You, you kind of hid with that. Amen. But over the years, the potential has come out. And now he's the worship leader of two of the greatest churches in, in uh, Texas. Can I get an amen? Amen. And then, he, and then he ended up married this young Russian girl from California. Hallelujah. Who's a nurse. I mean, the potential. I've seen it in Pastor David, Pastor Joseph, other people in this house. The potential that's here is amazing. Amen. And it may take, how many know it takes a little while for something to grow? You can stare at it all day long. It's like it ain't never budget. Amen. But after a little while, amen, you give it some water, you give it some sunshine, it starts growing. It's who you can be that you haven't yet been. How far you can reach that you haven't yet reached. What you can do that you accomplish that you haven't yet accomplished. So potential is the sum of who you are and what you have yet to reveal. Now, I believe that when Jesus died, he reached his earthly potential. And he might be just one of the few. It's so, it's difficult to say. If I had more time, if I had more learning, if I had more understanding, amen, how much more potential that I could do. But there's something inside of all of us. And when I read about fasting, when I read about praying, when I read about giving, I realize there's so much potential in those seeds. And we've yet to accomplish everything that can take place. So we have potential because God destined us with it. Uh, Daniel chapter 11, 32 says, for the people that do know their God, they're going to be strong and do exploits. So they're strong, they do exploits. The word uh, strong there, on God is several things. He's omnipresent, always around us. He's omniscient, always knowing. God knows. When I read the Scripture, His ways are not our ways. When I try to ponder, I ponder. What Jesus does, I'm fascinated by it because of his always knowing, amen. And then omnipotent, all-powerful. He's all, he's got all power. Crossing the Red Sea, as we talked about last week, was no big feat to God. If you study the Scripture, you'll find out that God parted the Red Sea by a blast from his nostrils. One man lifted a stick, and God sneezed. Hear that. When I sneeze, I never sneeze just once. What if God would have went ahead and hit that thing twice? He would have parted an ocean on the other side. He sneezed, and the water parted. He didn't have to speak, didn't have to talk. Even when he talks, things are created. When he sneezed, the water parted. Amen. I see the power in God. He's always, amen, he's full of, he's potent, amen, powerful. He got power on reserve. 
He's past Duracell a long way. Tesla ain't never touched anything God got going on. God is always full of power. He don't have to recharge himself. He's got the power on reserve. God is God whether you choose to use that potential or not. And he's telling us if you'll fast, if you'll pray, if you'll give, I'm telling you there's power there. Amen. Those seeds are important. My potential is contingent on my attachment and my obedience to him. If I stay connected to him, amen, that he's got the power. I don't. Amen. I've never saved anybody. I've never changed anybody. I've never healed anybody. But amen, but I can be a conduit of the one who does. Amen. So I just say, if I lay hands on you, don't say Jerry healed me. I can't heal you. I can't save you. I can hurt you. Well, may not mean to, but the bottom line is God is the one who's got all the power. Amen? It's not us people. So my potential could be hindered by my last success if we just settle for the success. Amen? So i got to keep pressing. The potential principle is very simple. A seed, what you see is not all there is. When I look at you, you are not all you is. Amen? You use more than that. Hallelujah. And that's potential. Not what is, but what could be. And it's up to the soil. That's what I can't see. I can't see within all of us and myself the soil. I just got to keep cultivating it. I got to keep working it. Amen. So in every seed, there's a tree. In every fish, there's a school. In every sheep, there's a flock. In every cow, there's a herd. In every boy, there's a man. In every girl, there's a woman. In every deer, there's two back straps. Can I get an amen? Amen. So tragedy strikes when a tree dies in a seed. When a man dies in a boy, a woman dies in a girl, known as abortion. An idea dies in your mind. For untold millions, visions die unseen. Songs die unsung. Plans die unexecuted. Futures die buried in the past. The promises of this world go unanswered because potential remains buried. Can I tell you that most of those buried potentials are in the cemeteries all around our nation where people died before they fulfilled their potential? My place, my prayer is in your life that I'm able to help all of us, including myself, start reaching more of our potential. Amen. And so this may be a little bit of a harder message and maybe not be as fun as many times we've had here at the little country, but the bottom line, it's good business, amen, and it's good medicine. Most so-called believers haven't earned the title to be Christian yet, including your pastor, amen. We got to grow a little bit more. Can I get an amen? Amen. We got to press in. So Matthew chapter 6, let's move over to there so we can get to the giving and praying and fasting. Jesus said, now you got to understand, when I got born again, I did not understand any of this stuff. I would hear words. It was like... Have you ever been around people and is, they're talking a vocabulary you don't understand? I'm talking about like your teenagers. They will say stuff. They will. I'll have to ask for, you know, that's dabbing and, and uh, you know what I'm saying? Little quirks and things and, and uh, BFF and LOL. And uh, I thought LOL was lots of love. Then I found out it was laugh out loud. I had to change my LOLs. I sent out lots of love to people. I forgot I should be laughing at this stuff instead of saying I love you. I didn't understand. the. So when I got born again, I didn't understand the vernacular, the brothers, the sisters, fasting. They sure didn't understand the word fast. Didn't, didn't understand. It didn't make no sense to me to call something that seemed so slow fast. None at all. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogue. And on the streets to be honored by men, I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. I'm thankful that many of you give to others without trumpeting it. It's not on Facebook or Instagram. Amen. It's not flowed out there. You just give because that's your heart. Amen. And, and only Jesus has seen it. You've been giving. You've been pouring in you've been putting seed into people's lives and there are times it was out of desperation but sometimes you didn't do it out of desperation you did it because you wanted to be where they are let me just break that down to you there are times i will sow into somebody's life who are doing better than i am that that i i gave a, a millionaire i went out and bought him a pair of black uh ostrich skin boots gave it to him he was, a, he was a, his name was 
Pastor Miles Monroe, and he looked at me, and uh, I have his books in my library. He looked at me, he said, uh, Cowboy Preacher, why you, why you get me boots? And I said, because you, you wear funny shoes. Yeah, you got them platypus-looking shoes on, you know, and little horny stuff. I, I got some boots. He said, I've never owned a pair of cowboy boots. He about this tall. He's from the Bahamas. I gave him the boots. You know why I did that? I sold into his life somewhere I want to be someday. Amen. I've done it with my pastor, with Bishop Miller, other people. I sold into their life because that's where I want to be. Amen. So not only will I sow into the needy, I'll sow into those who are doing something in life because that's where I'm pulling myself toward. Amen. I'm pressing myself. You know, he died a few years ago in a plane crash. I've never regretted being a blessing to that man. Amen. Uh, it's one of the memories I've got. I thank God I was able to do it. Can I get an amen? Amen. Pastors that come here and preach, almost every time you see a pastor come in this church, I've already taken them to Boot Barn or Cavendish and bought them a pair of boots. Amen. They, they, they'll tell me, I'm, I'm wearing my boots when I come. Bishop Gary, I'm wearing my boots when I come. Amen. Blesses my heart. Amen. Because this church has been a giving kind of church. So we sow into where we're going. Can I get an amen? Get that reward. Amen. Verse 5. And when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. Let me back back up to giving here real quick. There's nothing wrong with you telling somebody you gave. The issue here is the trumpet blast out in front of everybody who probably don't even know you that you give it. Amen. You follow me? Uh, I had somebody I love with all my heart who struggled in life. Amen. And, and they, they came, they, they worked and, and were able to sell and get a little money. And they came to me and said, you know what I did? I said, what'd you do? I went and bought food and I bought blankets. On the coldest day of our year last year, you remember that cold snap it came through? They went in the New Caney area and they brought blankets and they brought food and gave it to people under the bridge. And they didn't make it my mission. That was their mission. Amen. It was something they wanted to do with their money. Amen. And they went down and done it. And they weren't blowing it. I won't even tell you who it is, but I'm so proud. I was happy. I mean, it blessed me because it showed me a little bit something that, that I hadn't seen in a long time. Can you get an amen? Amen. Verse 5, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray. Stand in the synagogues, on, in church, on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. In other words, you're going to shout it out. You're going to pray in front. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, the way we pray here in the church. I believe in praying out loud on, on Tuesday nights. Amen. I think it's important that we all pray. But this is talking about an arrogance in prayer. Amen. A, a articulation in prayer. Amen. So everybody looks at you instead of who you're praying to. Amen. So there's an issue there. Yeah, I, there's times I have had a little, <clears throat> a little too much boldness and stood up in restaurants and told everybody about a head. You know, you heathens, the hallelujah, and prayed over all the food and that didn't always win people close to Jesus. Amen. I found that out real quick. So I had to be careful. You just got to do what Jesus says here. Amen. When you pray. And a matter of fact, the Bible said, when you pray, go into your closet. That word there is storage room. That literally is storage room in the Greek. Go into your storage room and pray. Amen. It's in your storage room when you're praying. That's where you find your guitar, your wife. That's where you find friends relationship, find everything I need. Amen. I think the word starts, it's like tamian or something like that in the Greek language. But it, when I need something, go into your storage room and pray. Shut the door behind you. No distractions. Pray. Ask God for things. Amen. If it lines up, hallelujah, God said, I'll bless you with it. Can you get an amen? Amen. When you fast, mm, the word fast means to cover the mouth. It, it, it means to abstain. Amen. It means to it had to have discipline and self-control. It, it, it was commanded, amen, by, by God to the Jewish people and now to us. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father. When you fast, look at it again, verse 16. Do, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they fasted. I tell you the truth that they have received the reward in full. Did you know your face says everything? Your face says everything. When I'm preaching, I can read you like a book. It's like scowls, upside-down smiles, 
You look like that little dummy Walter. I'm going to leave that right there. Hmm. Not happy about stuff. You could just read it. So it says here when they fasted, they they disfigured their faces. And people would walk by and say, oh, they must be spiritual. They must be fasting. You know, oftentimes when I'm fasting, I keep a toothpick in my mouth because that's an indication that I just ate. So you ain't going to have to ask me if I've ate. I got a toothpick in my mouth. But I hadn't ate anything, but I'll chew that toothpick. That's probably the fourth toothpick I've chewed up that day. And if you get one that's cinnamon flavored, it just helps a little bit more when you, okay, back over here. I tell you the truth, they got their reward. Verse 17, but when you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Now, the reason I read to you about the seed is that when your ground is prepared, when your heart is prepared and you start fasting, amen, there's a sincerity, there, there, there's an integration between you and God, amen, to the point where your Father in heaven knows what you're doing, and he will reward you for that. He said that there's certain things that only happen through prayer and fasting. Speaking of devils running, amen, bless it, healing will come forth in your life. It's through prayer and fasting. Now, fasting is a medical term also. Many times when you get sick, your body will shut down. Jason Drotty, the guy who was speaking the guitar, was sick last week. His body shut down on him, and he started fasting. You know what he said as soon as I walked in the room? Lost 11 pounds last week, Pastor. Amen. So what happened? He was fasting. Amen. His body shut down, and it brought health into his body. Many times we, we're, we're just putting things in, amen, eating, and we don't care about anything else. But at that moment, we start fasting. We get more sensitive. Everybody say sensitive. Amen. Sensitivity is a powerful thing. Amen. To be able to feel the needs and hurts of others around you. Oftentimes we can't do that because we're just too full. Amen. We're too lazy. Oftentimes we eat, we just want to go and take a nap. Amen. Fasting does something. Too. Jesus fasted for 40 days. He didn't go without. Matter of fact, there are two types of fasting in, in the Word of God. Full what, what Jesus did again for 40 days. He drank water. Please hear me. He drank. Okay? He did, he did without food. You can do without food 40 days, but you can't do without water for three. You got to hydrate. Amen. Cramps will come in. You, you'll hurt yourself. So don't, don't be foolish. Drink. And I would say drink whatever you want. I, not everything, whatever you want. Please don't go there. Amen. Uh, drink. Drink that which is good for you. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't even say that. Some of y'all think some of that's good. Uh, drink. Do right. Second thing is partial. Daniel in the Bible, amen, Daniel and, his three, and the three Hebrew boys, amen, it was a partial fast. Matter of fact, Daniel chapter 1 verse 12 says, Daniel was, uh, he's, a, he's a eunuch. His reproductive opportunities have been removed from him. He's been kidnapped. He's, been, he's exiled. He's in a place called Babylon. Amen. The three other boys that got the same thing happened to them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these four men are there, and Daniel is discipling these three guys. Amen. He's working with them. So because of his influence in the kingdom, they came to them, and they wanted them to eat, eat, eat. And Daniel said this, please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food, sweets, whatever it is they got. Amen. And then... Treat your servants in accordance with what you see. Well, he's taking a chance here. So they agreed this to do this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. This, this thing about fasting will clear your complexion. It will get your system moving better. Your intake will, by the way, this thing will combat any virus sickness, the healthier we get, the better off we're going to be. Amen. We've already known that this virus attacks people that have struggled with health, so I want to be healthier. If we do this together, if we corporately fast together, in other words, you're not just a Lone Ranger. By the way, the Lone Ranger was never alone. He always had Tonto. Uh, so if we do this together, we're able to help one another and encourage. My wife and I will get together. 
Amen. I'll talk with my kids. I'll be with people. I'll talk with David. I'll talk with Josiah and Joseph. We'll talk about it. I'll probably go on more of a soup salad and cereal. Uh, stay away from bread sweets and fried foods. Amen. I, I'll take some more time instead of watching TV. I'll, I'll read my Bible more. Amen. I'm going to pray more. I'm gonna just get, but it's important that I tell somebody what I'm doing. Amen. We're going to do this together. Hallelujah. And then, then you got to understand fasting is going to affect you emotionally. You, when I say sensitivity, you'll probably cry more after 10 days. <laughs> Every time you see the TV pop on with a Burger King commercial or, or a chicken sandwich pops up there with Popeyes. You know? <laughs> but it ain't going to last forever. Can I get an amen? Amen. But something's going to happen in this church. God start healing people. Life start turning around. We start getting better. And who knows what the roadblocks and detours and potholes that we have ahead that we're going to need to be fasted and prayed up for when it happens. Amen. So fasting is designed to put prayer wings on your prayers. When you're praying, it just works better. Fasting is designed to drive back oppressing powers of darkness, loosens the captives. It'll give a child of God an edge over the enemy. Fasting with prayer says, I mean business. Amen. Fasting often brings pressure for a breakthrough to come in warfare, situation that calls for people of violence. Fasting brings forth expansion. Matter of fact, you know, my wife has had several uh, surgeries and chemo and things of that dealing with it. I know many of you in here have walked through this. They will tell her, you don't eat or drink anything for the next 12 hours, 24 hours. They'll shut your body down. Amen. And you, you know what you'll do? You'll go, yes, doctor. Sure. Pastor Jerry, he up here preaching. Hallelujah. Shut it down for a little while. Ah, hear that every January. Amen. But if you want to see a breakthrough, if you want to see God answer your prayers, amen, if you want to see God bless you 30-fold, 50-fold, 100-fold, if you want to see investment into your life because there's potential there for your heart, amen, and you start making your heart a little bit softer, amen, by the reading of the Word of God, then you're going to say, you know what, I think I can do this today. Amen, I think I can press, I think I can do this with, with the church family, amen, hallelujah. You, you know, you'll ne- if you don't do this, you're going to neglect God's work and you're going to fail to accomplish a lot of things in life. Amen. But I, I want to fast. A believer's fast. Isaiah 58. And I'm going to start closing with this. All through Scripture, from beginning to end, I read about fasting. Fasting was just something the early church did. The, uh, the Hebrews did. By the way, other nations do it. Other religions do it. But none like our God. Amen. This is where it all started. So when I'm reading about this, I find that some people the same way they prayed and they gave and they fasted, they did it for ulterior motives. So Isaiah said this, chapter 58, verse 4. He says, your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Let me just say this again. If when you're fasting and you get mad, you get angry, you get upset, eat a snicker. Can I get an amen? Amen. Don't get into a place where you became meaner because you've done it. That's not this issue here. Is this the kind of fast I've chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? So they made it religious instead of relational. Amen. If I'm struggling, I want to talk to the Father about it. Amen. Make this thing relational. Verse 6 says, Is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, untie the cords of the yoke, set the oppressed free, and break every yoke? Amen. To break every chain? Is it not to share your food with the hungry, to provide for the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked, to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? I have found that when I'm fasting, I am more apt to bless somebody. Amen. To give them something to be a blessing to those that are hungry and need clothes or shelter. The result, everybody say result. And when your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. So not only is there a blessing going out, there's a blessing coming in. So in my body, and I can't tell you over 20, actually I started fasting in the 80s. I would fast every Wednesday in the 80s. I do it as a weekly thing. Amen. I can't tell you that over the years how much God may have healed my body and touched me when I should have already been down because I've been fasting. Amen. 
many of you believe in preventive medicines and, and vitamins and your vitamin C, zinc popping, amen, believer in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And you're going through all that. But, but on the bottom line, if I'm fasting, who knows what that has prevented in my life. Amen. And how that it may have helped me through life. Your healing will quickly appear. Your righteousness will go before you. And the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. God's going to take care of you. And when you call, when you call, when you pray, the Lord will answer you. Amen. And when you cry for help, he will say, here I am. Amen. If you do, if you do away with the yoke of oppression and with the pointing of the finger of malicious talk, oh, I didn't know that was in there, Pastor. Yeah, I added it this year. It's in the Scripture. It's there. Listen to that again. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and the malicious talk, in other words, when you fast, quit gossiping. Quit talking about people. You know one of the one things you can, well, Pastor, I don't know about fasting food and stuff. You know, I got this medical issue, and the doctor tells me I need to eat five times a day and stuff. He bet, well, that's between you and your doctor. But, but if you decide that, how about fast malicious talk? How about fast gossip this month? Take 21 days and only say something positive. You can think something bad. Don't say it. Don't text it. Don't write it. Don't post it. Don't. But quit talking bad about people, particularly your family. Amen. Learn, learn just. I'm going fat, and then, and then help somebody put a check on you. In other words, you're saying it, you don't even realize you're doing it. So get somebody to help you fast that, so whenever that mouth of yours start to vomit something it shouldn't, they say, hey, don't you say that. Don't you, you, you're fasting talking like that. You're fasting cussing this month. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're fasting those words. You're not doing it this month. And it, watch what happens in 21 days if God don't start turning some things around your life. Ooh, come on, Jesus. Amen. Martin Luther said this, the one that nailed the 99 Thesis to the walls of the Wittenberg door in Germany. He says, we want, he wants nothing at all to do with you if by your fasting you court him as if you were a great saint, yet meanwhile nurse a grudge or anger against your neighbor. He don't want nothing to do with you if you're going to be that way. So the results of fasting, loose the bonds of wickedness, Undo the heavy burdens, feeding the hungry, sheltering the poor, clothing the naked. Our light will break forth. Healing will arise. You'll cry, and he'll answer you. When you fast. Justin, help me. Travis, help me. Grab the bucket here. When you grab a bucket over here. When you fast, put oil on your head. Wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men. If you're fasting, would you go before the people? Amen. If you'd like some oil, everybody take one that wants one. If you need two or three to give to somebody else, share this message with them. Amen. Release it. Get, get two or three of them if you like. The word disciple means one who follows the disciplines of the mentor. There are three things that we know Jesus did, and he did it very well. He prayed, he gave, and he fasted. He prayed, he gave, and he fasted. Amen. He'd set aside time. Matthew 13, 13, 20 says, The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. We want our hearts to be prepared today. Amen. To be able to receive the word of God. Roots, my friend, strong revelation of God's Word to understand His Word, strong devotion to God's plan, strong relationship with God's children. If we're going to be left standing at the end of 2022, it's going to start with our Genesis today. Amen? As we start. Hallelujah. If you're watching online, get some Wesson Oil, Crisco, WD-40, Amen. Just something with some oil in it. Johnson's baby oil. Amen. And remember this, a, a little, little dab is all you need. Just a little. But we're going to do this. I remember years ago, I would I need one of them, Travis, if you would. Years ago, would you open it for me? Go ahead and open that for me, David. 
years ago. Thank you, sir. When I first started doing this, H, you might even remember something. I would line everybody down the middle, and I'd get oil on my hand. I'd anoint everybody in the building. Anoint them with oil. Boy, I mean, I'd slather them with oil all the way down the building. And then it's like I read the Scripture again. It said, when you fast, you put oil on your head. You wash your face. And the revelation was this. Toby, I ain't never washed anybody's face in this building. I ain't never took y'all in the bathroom, wash your face like I did one of my I never done that. So if I ain't washing your face, then I don't need to put oil on your head. As a matter of fact, you're going to hit up Thursday. I ain't even going to be around, and you're going to need to anoint yourself again. A word going to slip out. Oh, thank you, G. I might want to anoint that tongue right there. Amen. Anoint my earlobes to hear the right thing. Got to get an amen. Amen. To anoint yourself. And how, how does this all work, Pastor? I don't know. Can I be honest? I don't know. I've been taking vitamin C, zinc, stuff. My wife threw at me. I have no idea what it is. She said, take that every morning. I said, will it help? She said, they say it will. So I take it. I don't know how it works. I don't know how B.C. powder keeps the headache away. But my daddy taught me to do I don't know how a lot of things work. I don't know how oxygen works. <sighs> but I still enjoy it. I don't know how the oil works. But all through Scripture, oil was used for anointing. Amen. It was, it was used as an ability to defeat the enemy. It was used to be a blessing. Amen. And if I keep my heart right the next 21 days... And it's good soil. There's tremendous potential here. Could I get you to take a little bit of that oil right now? Just put it on your finger. Just a little bit. For you ex-Catholics, you can make the sign of the cross on your forehead when you anoint. From y'all from the Middle East, just a dot. I really don't care how you do it. There's no simple way, but let's pray this together. Lord Jesus, I anoint myself for the mission ahead. I ask you to take my heart, make it good ground. Help me to read the word, to pray, to fast, to give, that I may be a blessing to others, to see the oppressed set free, for healing to come into my life and those I pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise in here. I don't know. Amen. You're slippery now. Amen. I know when they anointed David as king as a young boy, they took a horn of oil and poured it over his head. Amen. They saturated him. He made him slippery. Hallelujah. Everywhere he went, he was oily. Hallelujah. Nothing wrong with all that. I remember years ago, Josiah, I'd say something like this. You got to fast at last. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, well, I put it up there just for y'all. Amen. So whatever I say, y'all y'all repeat it. You got to fast at last. You got to pray to stay. You got to give to live. You got to read to lead. You got to walk to walk. You got to talk to talk. You got to fly real high. And if you can't hack it, then grab your jacket. In other words, I hope to see you next Sunday, but if you can't handle this, then well, I'll see you in February or probably at a funeral or something, all right? Amen. But the issue is simply to fast to last. Fasting will keep you stronger. It'll keep you longer. Amen. It'll help your body. And how many know a lot of us, particularly your pastor, amen, I, I, I can afford to lose a few pounds. Amen. To fast to last. Now, I'm not doing it as a dietary thing, but it's just it works that way. Fast. I, go back to that. Hold it. Hold it there, if you would. Some folk taking notes. You got. You got. You got to pray to stay. Amen. My prayer life keeps me in with Jesus. Communication with Him. Amen. Is such a powerful thing. Got to pray to stay. You got to give to live. You'll li leave a legacy by what you give. That brings me to this point here. Reach and grab a, an offering envelope in front of you. 
Amen. Be faithful with your giving today. If you're giving online, amen, prepare with your phone, holywild.net slash give, holywild.net slash give. We thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Giving leaves a legacy. The reason this building is here is because you were givers. The reason this building will always main, remain here is because you're givers. Amen. That works for both of our churches. Not only that, our giving honors God. Amen. We give because we honor him. Does God need your money? Are you kidding? He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. Amen. He's, he's, he's got, he owns it all. He just wants to know, can you honor him and be faithful to give back that which he has blessed you with? Amen. So pray to uh, give to live. Pray to stay. Read to lead. Amen. Reading is such an important thing, your education. And on top of all that, if you can't hack it, get your jacket. Amen. Because uh, you can go find a church that's nicer to you. Amen. Hallelujah. If I get our servant leaders to come up, we'll take our offering right now as Pastor David prepares to come. As we give today, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the king. Amen. This is one of those messages that...